This is a follow-on video. I promised you all a, an upgrade to this single variable capacitor crystal radio that I made a short time ago. And I hinted that I would be putting a cat whisker on here. And I have done that and I thought I would show you this upgrade. It is rather simple. Let's zoom in. This is the cat whisker that I've shown in a couple other videos. And I've got uh, the diagrams on how to make this on Thingiverse and I will put those in the links below. It's a rather simple thing to do to replace the, the uh, diode. And you say, wait a minute, you still have the diode in place. Yes, but it's not hooked up. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the wire is not attached right there. And why did I leave it in the circuit? Okay, there's kind of a dirty secret about using a cat whisker. And that is, in order to find a hot spot on the cat whisker, you have to be tuned to a station. But in order to tune to a station, you have to be on a hot spot on the, on the uh, cat whisker. So what a lot of people do is they'll leave a diode in place and then you just kind of reach over here and you touch it to find the station and then you release it. Uh, and once you're on the station, then you can look for your hot spot on your uh, crystal. That's one of the secrets. Now, if you don't have a diode, what you do is you start tuning around, you move the, uh, you, you move the uh, capacitor, you tune the capacitor and you hunt around while you're doing that until you find something and then you mark your, your capacitor, you mark the dial rather, or remember where it is, what room where that station is, and then you can come back to it. Yeah, again, it's, uh, this is quite simple. What I have done is I've taken the diode out of the circuit and I've got one end released and I have hooked the cat whisker up to where the diode would be, these two points. So what happens is the electricity now flows here and this is connected to this side of the cat whisker, so to the ball. This brass piece touches the ball, comes out here, touches the whisker itself. That touches the mineral sample. The mineral sample is sitting on this, it's a copper end cap. And on the bottom of the, bottom of the copper end cap, I have soldered a brass washer. And so that, let me clarify that. There's a washer that is soldered to this wire and the copper end cap is touching that and they're screwed together right here. So the washer, the place where the washer is soldered to, it's this wire right here, comes out, goes through the yellow shrink wrap and is attached to this point. So this just makes a closed circuit and it also becomes our uh, diode, our detector. And again, you can just place it in there and start hunting around. I am using, uh, this piece has both Galena and it also is, of course, mostly iron pyrite. I have found that it works really well. <laughs> I'm very surprised. I cannot hear the difference between the, the diode and the uh, crystal when I've got it on. So now you say, okay, I don't believe you. I want to see it operating. So we will go hook it up to the antenna in the ground and I will use my uh, little oscilloscope to show you when I hit a station. And so then we can compare on the oscilloscope and see which is better because of course I can't play the music or whatever that's on the radio station because then YouTube takes down my, my video. So yeah, we've uh, gone through all this and now I guess the thing to do is to prove that it actually works. Here we're set up. I've got my antenna and my ground connected here. Uh, I'm tuned into a station. I happen to know there's one right here. I've got my crystal in uh, in the circuit and the uh, diode is out right now uh, you can see over here what's happening and this is a very good spot on the crystal now there are different places on the crystal some of them you can barely hear something some of them you can hear medium and there are others that are just as good as the uh, as the 1N34A type diode so the trick is that what I have found is it's the imperfections in the crystal that really give you the best sound. Uh, yeah, I can get something off of one of these flats back here, like the, the flat sides of the cubes, but the edges uh, where it transitions from one cube to another, and like this rough spot right here, this is giving me a really excellent, uh, really excellent signal. And let me see if I can get something on here, and then I will bring the other into the circuit the diode into the circuit and you can see for yourself the comparison for some reason this radio 
just got silent they're starting up a song i think yes it's just the beginning of a song it's very quiet but if i do this now the diode's in the circuit and yeah there's not much change so i will sit here and wait until they get something on here okay there we go now we bring in the diode take the diode out bring the diode in diode out diode in this spot on the crystal is almost the same as the diode i mean i'm listening i can't hear the difference so yeah um, let me go through the typical tuning is what you would do uh, in the old days is you would have to manipulate both of these until you accidentally found a spot then you would mark on your on your uh, face plate where you found that and that would be the place where you'd come back to and tune the next time because as i said earlier the trick to this is that in order to find a hot spot on the crystal you have to be tuned to a station but to be tuned to a station you have to have a hot spot on the crystal so uh, a lot of people these days will just leave the diode in place and what you do is you push the diode in here and then you tune to the station and then from then on once you mark the the face plate you no longer need to uh, come back and use the diode in fact you could take it completely out then the next time you would come here you'd set your dial to the mark and then you'd hunt around on your crystal for a uh, a hot spot and hot spots come and go also you bump these things vibrations will cause it to lose the uh, the uh, connection point and uh don't know what else to say i do really like this i mean the the fact that you're kind of going back to square one and you're doing this the way it was originally done my first radio i used galena uh, this happens to be iron pyrite with some galena in it but again it seems to work as well as the 1n34a diode so okay that was it just a brief update on this uh on this modification to this radio uh adding the cat whisker okay well i hope you found that useful and interesting in your home crystal radio projects